So we've evolved to be nice to kin, and this has influenced our psychology in certain ways. And the most obvious examples of this uh, concern our relationships to our children, because we're most related to our children, and our children are most related to us. And this is particularly the case for the psychology of birds and mammals, including uh, humans, as opposed to fish and reptiles, because birds and mammals invest in quality, not quantity. We have relatively few offspring, so it's kind of important that uh, we take care of them and that they survive. And one of the interesting evolutionary features of creatures like us is that there's a long period of dependence prior to sexual maturity. And um, so this is in some way a, a biological adaptation. We have slowed down our course of growth so that we can spend this time learning and adapting to our environment before making it out in the world as sort of separate and distinct agents. And as a psychologist, there are now two separate psychological stories we have to ask. The first is, what are the psychological mechanisms of childcare? of how parents respond to children. And the second is, what are the psychological mechanisms underlying how children respond to parents? We know a little bit about the psychology of how we respond to children. For instance, we, we are wired up to like children. We are wired up to respond to their distress calls, which would be like a crying in humans. We are wired up to find them cute so um, this picture, if you Google images and type in cute baby, this is one of the things that come up. Um, there are certain features that are present in uh, young mammals across not just humans, but other mammals, a large protruding forehead, big eyes, upturned nose, chubby cheeks, and we're wired up to find this cute. So this evolved for dealing with children. What's interesting, and an example of an evolutionary accident is that when we see the same features in adults, that influences our perception of them. So some adults have baby faces. And um, when we see a baby face, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is an example of, of an adult with a baby face, relatively speaking, we tend to think of them more as naive and helpless and kind and warm, even though we could tell that they're not really uh, younger. And while we respond to somebody who has more of less of a baby face, more of a male testosterone face for men like uh, Ben Affleck, we don't think of them in the same way. We don't think of them as naive, helpless, kind, and warm. And this is an example of the psychologies and the, uh, you know, the byproducts of, this, of the adaptations that direct us towards children. Then from the child side, children have evolved to develop attachment to adults. And, um, and so they will typically attach to whoever's closest, whoever takes care of them. For a young baby, a young baby will typically prefer the voice and face and smell of the mother. And when the baby's able to explore, to toddle around, um, it will come back to the mother. You wonder why? What's the psychological mechanism underlying that? And there's different theories. One theory is what's sometimes called a cupboard theory. Uh, by B.F. Skinner. So we looked at his theory of operant conditioning before, and from an operant conditioning standpoint, uh, reinforcement and reward and punishment, um, the mother's rewarding. The mother gives milk, for instance. And so, um, so that's why the baby comes back to the mother, because, um, because of the rewards that the mother yields. A related theory, but quite different, is developed by the psychologist Bowlby. And Bowlby, unlike Skinner, points to innate tendencies specifically evolved for, um, for attachment and argues that there's uh, two forces going on. One is a positive force. Babies are drawn to their mother for comfort and social interaction and physical warmth, uh, the sort of feeling of cuddling, and a negative force, a fear of strangers that drives um, babies uh, away from individuals who aren't familiar, who they aren't attached to. There's been some, uh, some lovely experiments that, um, that present some evidence for the innate attachment theory by Bowlby, some which are done with non-human primates. And I'll end uh, this part of the lecture by showing you a brief clip from a famous experiment designed to look at the nature of attachment. 
Let me show you a monkey raised on a nursing wire mother. Now here are 106's two mothers. As you can see, it was weaned on a wire mother. Here's baby 106. Watch. He's going to the wire mother. He's got to eat to live. Oh, he's going back. He's back on the cloth mother, and he'll stay on the cloth mother. Actually, this baby spends his 17 to 18 hours a day on the cloth mother, and less than one hour a day on the wire mother. We had predicted that the variable of contact comfort would be a variable of measurable importance, but we were unprepared to find that it completely overwhelmed and overshadowed all other variables, including those of nursing. Frankly, doctor, if it comes to a choice between wire and cloth, it's reasonable to expect that any child will go to the cloth. It's a matter of creature comfort, like a baby with its blanket. But is this really love? Well, what do you mean by saying that a baby loves its mother? Certainly one thing we mean is that it gets a great feeling of security in the presence of the mother. Now, Mr. Collingwood, wouldn't you say that if you frightened a baby, that it went running to its mother, was comforted, and then all the fear disappeared and was replaced by a complete sense of security that that baby loved its mother. Now, in this experiment, this is the apparatus we use. That looks diabolical. That's just the way the baby monkey feels about it. Flashing eyes, loud sound, moving mechanical parts, all of these things are designed to frighten a monkey. Now here we have a peaceful, resting baby monkey. Let's find out what his reactions to his mother are when we frighten him. All right, and he does what any child will do in a similar situation. He runs away. It's more than running away. He was running to his mother to touch her, to drive away his fear. Contact with the mother changes his entire personality. Look, now he's actually threatening the diabolical object. All right. This gives us part of the picture of the strength of infantile love.